and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged, this time coming from lovely, sunny Chippenham in Wiltshire. Uh, I've come here to see a, a company called Good Energy. Now, they're an electricity supply, you can buy your electricity from Good Energy, but some of the innovative infrastructure things they're doing at the moment are really exciting, and I can't wait to find out more. So Julia, thank you for a start to uh, giving us the time to, to talk to you today. It's, I'm very excited about this because it's fascinating what you're doing. So the wires are confusing and yes. electricity is confusing. So where does the <laughs> electricity come from when, you, when you're a good energy customer and you turn a light on? So electricity is all about vibration. So uh, when you switch on a power station, essentially uh, electrons don't flow from one end of the wire to the other. What they do is they vibrate and then they knock into their mates and they vibrate. Right. So, so essentially what you get is a set of vibrations going down. Okay, they pass the message on. Right. Think about it like that. So, so actually saying which message is coming from where is really quite complicated. So yeah. we don't do that. What we do is we simplify it. So we have a bunch of customers who we plug into the end of the wires. Uh, we have a bunch of small generators. We work with about 1,500 small generators across the UK. Right. Uh, we plug them in, and what we promise is that for every unit our customers use, our generators will generate a unit. So we create that kind of marketplace, essentially. Because yeah. because eventually you could see a world, a world where people generate more of their power themselves, and actually maybe you generate power and you sell it to your neighbour, so you get this kind of peer-to-peer -peer approach. I've always believed that that's the direction of travel, that we should see this, is that people should get more control on their power, they can generate themselves, yeah. They can flog it to their neighbours. Um, and actually, we end up with a much more equitable way of generating power in yeah. the UK. So there's two things that that does. There's one, you get the local money flow. So you're not spending money that's going out of the country. Right. It's staying here in this country. Yeah. And that's all we do. So we don't have a conflict of interest when it comes to trying to make a decision. Ooh, should we support this policy or this idea around coal or should we support right. about renewables? We only support renewables. Right. So one of the interesting things then is, which I've thought about since I've had solar panels, is yeah. if this keeps growing, what is the role of a, a big energy company. I mean, it, it, presumably it does reduce, but could you be the conduit for that marketplace? Yeah. So what I see the future as is actually we become like a peer-to-peer -peer platform for, right. for generators and customers to kind of almost like the eBay of energy. Right. So you, you essentially, we're no longer buying power from sort of big power stations, transporting it down big wires and jet giving it to you. You're saying, I've got a bit too much in this half hour, I'll give it to you, I'll find somebody else to flog it to, right. and then somebody else might have some too much when you don't have enough, and then we make sure it works as a whole thing. Our job becomes a completely different role, yeah. which is much lighter touch, it can be much more digitalized, um, and it, it doesn't mean you need these big companies anymore. It's people taking back their own power and us being the platform to help them do it. Right, because I suppose that would be a fear that many people would have is, oh God, I've got to do, I've got to send electricity bills to all my neighbours. <laughs> Yeah. Each month. But yeah, so, so that, that's kind of the concept that each person could become a power station. Right. So one of the key things that is frustrating and difficult is the general perception that renewables are more expensive. Building a new nuclear power station, we've seen all the issues at Hinkley. Yeah. Yielding, building, building a new coal power station, building a new um, gas power station. Those are not cheap things. No. And actually, if you compare what we call the levelised cost, so that's the cost over the whole lifetime, including all the costs up front. You're getting renewables competing with new gas power. Which is always touted as the cheapest. Yes, you know. but, but the issue you've got is there's a bunch of power stations out there that paid off their, their investment years, years and ago, years yeah. ago. So you're competing with that, which is different. Yeah. And so um, that, that's why when we have this conversation, people say it's cheap, it's, not, it's more expensive. Well, it's more expensive if you're comparing it to something that was built years and years ago. Yeah. Um, but if you're comparing it to something you wanted to build today, it wouldn't be. Also, if, you, if you're looking at people's homes, you're getting to the point, it's not quite there, but you're getting to the point that it's cheaper to put a solar panel in than it is to buy energy. Domestic household yes. electricity storage, yes. we're right at the very beginning of that emerging as a 
viable technology. Yeah, it's completely. still expensive and it's still, yeah. it's going to be numpties like me that do it first. <laughs> but do you, do you feel that could change the picture if that does catch on in a big way? Oh, uh, completely. So, yeah. so, so the shape that we see of power, and I think I showed you earlier yeah. what, our, what our power shape looks like, is that so particularly with solar, you have a shape which is kind of a daytime shape. Right. And then you've got an early evening peak. And actually, if you chop that bit off and put it in there, you've got a really good balance. Yeah. And that's what storage can do. Um, people like you are great because actually you need people like you to start the curve off. Yeah. It's, not, it's not mainstream yet in terms of the pricing for it. But early adopters and people who generate a lot of power in their own home probably is getting to a place where it's a good thing to have. Yeah. But people who, if they're exporting a lot during the day and they've got a big installation, batteries are not far off. Is it conceivable in your mind then, you know, not possibly even in our lifetimes, but that, that the UK could be 100% powered by renewables? Oh, yeah. Is that, oh, that, yeah. that, I mean, technologically, completely. So we've right. got the resources. We've got 40% of Europe's wind resources yes. in this country. It's massive. So offshore and onshore. Uh, there's still quite a lot of potential of onshore in Scotland. And then there's a bunch of offshore still potential. You've got tidal, tidal yeah. lagoon, potentially could do sort of 7 to 10% of the UK's electricity. Then you've got um, solar. We, we were at 13 gigawatts last year. We're, we're getting wow. close. So we're massive on solar as well in this country. Right. So combine all of those plus storage, yeah. plus looking at making sure you make people's homes efficient, yes. you can get to 100%. Because that feeling I'm getting now is that there's much less dismissal from you know existing oh, large energy companies, for example, that they're not everybody's going, lining right, up. Everybody's right. lining up to try and figure out what their role is right. in storage right now, and everybody's figuring up trying to figure out how they're going to pay for it. Yeah, um, they're also slightly waking on government because government's sort of messing around with a couple of the rules that affect it. So we kind of need a clear steer from government as that they're going to leave some stuff alone and maybe improve some stuff because. Right. It's not so much about subsidy that you need necessarily on storage, it's you need clarity and you need to be able to access a lot of the benefits yeah. um, that the system would normally pay for, but you can't always get access to no. unless you're a big power station. Yeah. So, so there's some things that need unpicking that we're talking to them about at the right. moment. Now, I occasionally get the kind of angry tweet, you know, saying, oh, you're, you and your subsidised renewables. And they're going, well, I, I know that there is the, rather... All technologies are subsidised. It's all technologies are subsidised. And all energy point, sources are subsidised. I'm subsidized just about to write a blog. 2.5 billion into the oil and gas industry this year. Right. The first place they went to visit, first place the new Secretary of State went to visit was Aberdeen. So I'm not quite sure what that... Two 2.5 million billion is unless it's a subsidy. Yeah. Because it is a subsidy. It is a subsidy, right. Yes. And, and if you look at the old DEC, so the old DEC's, I think it's about 80 to 90% of the old DEC's budget. So DEC is Department of Energy. Was, and, was, Department of Energy and Climate anymore. Change. Right. So it's, it's not valid that stat now as it's part of Bayes, but where it was originally, it was 80 or 90% of that budget was on nuclear decommissioning. Right. Wow. Which is what, yeah, because that's one of my. So, so whose bears. subsidy is that? <laughs> renewables were like two or three percent when i started it's now 25 right. percent of the uk's electricity right which very few people know that yeah it's I mean, massive your, your customers probably do because they'll be highly well we tell well them informed. a lot as well yes <laughs> <laughs> listen to this we should be really proud about yeah, that yeah. as a country it's amazing and think about it for every unit we produce here in this country we don't have to buy it from somewhere else yes we forget yeah. how important that is yeah. for the first time in the uk you have the power to select your power because we are changing the way your electricity is sourced. This is decentralised. This is local. 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 This is national. This is 100% renewable. Together. 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 We are Good Energy Electricity. So, Will, Selectricity, I like the, I like the, the name. Good. Because uh, it's select and electricity. It's the so intention. Yeah, it, it works. <laughs> it works. So can you explain what, what electricity is? Sure. So electricity is a peer matching uh, system designed for the energy market. We looked at some of the emerging themes in other markets, such as Uber for transport and right. eBay for obviously buying and selling and Airbnb for uh, holiday rentals. And one principle that they all hold core to the way that they're designed is that 
they create a direct relationship between a provider of a service and a consumer of a service. What we wanted to do is take some of these principles from emerging products out there in the wide world and apply them to energy. I mean, you don't have to individually buy you know, a kilowatt hour from Joe no. Schmo up the road but the, the software kind of, it, that's, it's facilitating that on an automatic Indeed. basis. So what customers will be able to do when they enter the platform is set their preferences essentially. So if I owned a business in Cornwall, I could state that I only want to buy my power from Cornish generators and that I prefer wind turbines. And based on those preferences, what the system will do using some pretty clever analytics will essentially for every half hour of the day, when there's a generator in your locality which meets your preferences, it will fill up your energy bucket with power based on your preferences. Right. Are you managing to fulfill their bucket for, uh, to a large extent with their, their choices? Yeah, I think um, we, we ran the project as a pilot and there was lots of brilliant case studies whereby for entire months, some of our Cornish customers were getting 100% of their power from Cornish sites for every half hour of every day. So really, really great. Um, and, were they, and were these mostly commercial sites rather than uh, uh, domestic customers? Commercial sites. So uh, the whole platform is built off of really rich data and that data doesn't quite exist in the residential market yet. Um, it is on the horizon and we're looking to, to do some tests of the platform for, for homeowners soon. Right. Across the map, we've got a whole bunch of different icons and they depict the location and technology type um, right. of the renewable generators. And you see right. these little ones here with the dots. These are commercial customers. So, oh, I see. Um, so you've got both on the map. We've got both right. on the map. And what we've got here, um, while there's loads of points on there, there's a very small proportion of our entire portfolio. So we're really excited right. about getting 1,400 points on a map. Um, it will look incredible right. once, they're, once they're all on there. We can go to their individual the account Eden level. Project. I've, no, I've heard of them. There are rush hour periods on the energy grid right. and you have to pay more for using power when right. there is a rush hour. What this tool also does is shows people what proportion of their bill is coming from using power at rush hour periods. So one the, another thing we've seen is an unintended consequence of the platform is we've seen some businesses start changing how they operate on a daily basis to shift their demand out of these really, really busy Peak periods, periods right. and help reduce their costs. But what that also does is help reduce the need for uh, potentially buying uh, new cables and wires and upgrading the system right. and helps us improve the amount of renewables that we can use yeah. on the grid. So I'll show you Westmill Solar Farm. So Westmill Solar Farm okay. is one of the most successful stories of uh, co cooperative investment in the UK. Right. Um, just based up the road from where we are in Oxfordshire. and they are providing power to businesses as far away as, uh, as London, which is, which is great. They're also providing power to uh, oh, South some Mem super supercharger. Some supercharger. So I've used some of their power. I've yeah, charged it so on South Mem Supercharger. Wow. Um, BAFTA. Sweet. BAFTA, yeah. Wow. South Mem They've got some posh clients. Indeed. <laughs> That's the thing that a lot of people will grok mm. is, is price fluctuation because, because we've thing. absolutely been in this flat level my electricity bill is too much, you know, all the time. And wait a minute, well, there are times when, because we don't know that, the general problem, there are times when electricity is dirt cheap. Indeed. Because um, there's so, such a, 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 you know, an oversupply of it. And on a sunny day in the summer, uh, because our entire power portfolio is renewable, yeah. we've got maybe several times the amount of solar power that we then, need. Then you, then you can shift, and what yeah. we have to do is just sell that into the market. What would be a much better mechanism, which is in our sites, uh, hopefully a few years down the line, is being able to incentivize behavioral change yeah. so that our energy customers could be provided with signals so that they can use that power when yeah. it's being generated. And yeah. what we've got here is like the fundamentals of a toolkit that will help us get to that, that, that right. future. Right. And we've not had to do anything overly sophisticated with it. All the data exists, right. all the customers exist. Yeah. It's just pulling it together, in a, together. In, a, in a bit of a novel way, um, which we hope, again, will be a something that we can use to integrate new technologies like right. storage in the future so yeah. people can buy and sell from those right we're yes. thinking about opportunities for how we could um, maximize surplus power and use it for supplying it into evs and charge points right. in the future so again what we've got is a fundamental but there's a lot more that we can do to actually turn it from a proposition into something yeah. that has monetary meaning for yeah. being involved yeah. and obviously can help us put more renewables onto the grid yeah
So, Julie, I love the atmosphere in here. It's very busy. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot going on, a lot of sort of hushed talking. So, th is, this the, is this where, you, if you call good energy, this is where you get yeah, through to? Yeah, this is where you get through. So, there's right. a call centre down there. There's teams here who deal with billing. There's teams here that deal with all the technical side of it. Right. Um, so, yeah, so this is it. Um, mm. And actually, the reason why you can't hear that much noise, it's got great sound dampening. Very in this clever building. in the ceiling, isn't it? I yeah, it's that. fantastic. Yeah. No. yeah. It makes a massive difference and yeah. um, also these teams used to be in lots of separate rooms right. and now they're all together they can see each other they can hear each other right. it's 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 a much better atmosphere right now cell electricity i've just been hearing about that it's yeah. just brilliant idea I and mean, it's a real different approach to the way we buy and sell electricity and at the moment that's quite you've got hundreds of suppliers yes and and then hundreds of consumers yes because in pre-digital yeah, yeah, yeah. world that would have been like mind-boggling imagine how many well, it was. invoices well, we first you'd have started. to set well right. that's what we did at the beginning because <laughs> right. oh, right. that's i mean that's how we built the business because originally i went out and said oh i'll go and buy some renewable power so right. i went and did some deals with some local generators but i then went and talked to some of the bigger guys and they basically turned around and said we're not dealing with you right so i went okay so we'll go out and deal with all the small guys and right. we'll be the champion of the small guys right. and you're selling to companies at the moment to organizations rather than individuals yeah Yes. So, so, I mean, I think the next stage could be how could you do that maybe with a community? So could a community come together and collectively purchase power from a local renewable generator? Right. That's one idea. And we're doing some tests on that in Scotland at the moment. Right. And then the next stage would be, could you do that as an individual? Right. And then could you put a community online so you then get the proper peer-to-peer -peer training piece? Oh, what, within be, a community? So yeah. that, no, I see. Right. So that ah. could be the future. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Um, and, and at the moment, we're on a journey to see, because obviously each stage, you, you develop something, you want to make sure customers are interested. Yes, in. yes. So, so maybe, maybe that is in the future, but at the moment, that's kind of where we're going to right. see, does it work? Are people interested enough to yeah. do that? And if they are, we'll keep moving it forward. So can, I mean, is it possible now for a, a, a company that are watching this, who, you know, someone wants to join in? I mean, is it possible to, to, to apply and become a, a <laughs> electricity customer? Is Completely. That, you can right. supply and become a electricity generator or right. a electricity customer. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what we do every day. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. Well, that's all we've got time for. Thanks for watching. I think uh, what uh, Good Energy are doing is clearly amazing. I can't wait till I've got a peer-to-peer -peer electricity trading system at my house. Anyway, uh, have a look at the Patreon link. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. You probably have. Thanks if you have. And also, of course, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.